Hey everyone. In this video, I want to explore migrating from the Azure AD PowerShell module. Last week, I created a video that went over the fact that our good old Azure AD, well, it's being renamed. So we have a rename happening and the new name is the Microsoft Entra ID, in keeping with its new Microsoft Entra family of identity and identity related security solutions. And there was a huge amount of reaction to that, both positive and negative. And I'm gonna do a separate, I think, reaction to the reactions to try and clear up a few things. But one of the strongest negative reactions was, well, oh great. So right now, I have my scripts. So I could think about, okay, I've written all of my great scripts that I have in my scripts that I love and care for. Well, I am calling the Azure AD PowerShell module. And the concern is, great, if you're renaming Azure AD to Microsoft Entra ID, that means you're gonna rename the Azure AD module, and I'm gonna to have to go and update all of my scripts. That's gonna be a huge, painful amount of work. So there's really a good news, bad news type situation here. Um, the good news is they will not be renaming the Azure AD PowerShell module. The bad news is they're not renaming the Azure AD PowerShell module because this module has been on a deprecation path for a very long time. So they're not gonna bother renaming something that is going away. We can actually go and look, and I'll jump over here to the article quickly. So it's talked before about the PowerShell module deprecation, and right now that deprecation has been pushed back to March 30th, uh, 2024. It's uh, been pushed back a couple of times, some of these deprecations, but it is going away. And what really needs to happen is you move instead to the Microsoft Graph PowerShell module. So that's the new replacement. And I wanna go into some detail about that. So in the beginning, if we think about Azure Active Directory, well, there were actually previous modules. We had the MS Online, we had the Azure AD module, the Azure AD Preview module. And all of these work to get different APIs. We can think about for the authentication part, well for the authentication, there was this Azure AD developer endpoint. So there was this V1 endpoint. And on a client side, if I wanted to do write programs to interface with the authentication, we could use the uh, Azure AD authentication library, ADAL. So all of the modules used this V1 endpoint for their authentication. Then to actually get information after I'd done the authentication to get my token, what we then worked against was this Azure AD Graph API. So it was that Graph API that it then interacted with for its various requests the operations that it performed. And the key point here is, these only worked against Azure AD. This authentication endpoint could only work against Azure Active Directory. Obviously the Azure AD graph was limited to only talking to Azure AD. And obviously there were many, many other cloud platforms out there from Microsoft. Microsoft 365, Dynamics 365, you have the Microsoft personal accounts, you have B2C, there were all these other solutions. And so then what happened is Microsoft introduced a new authentication endpoint. So we had this existing V1 endpoint, and what they added was this Microsoft Identity Platform endpoint. So you could think of this as this V2 endpoint. And if I was gonna write applications, 
that was gonna interact with this, there was a new Microsoft authentication library to do all of the work for me. Now, the big deal about this is the MSAL and the Microsoft Identity Platform V2 endpoint, well, sure, it could absolutely still talk to Azure Active Directory, but it could also talk to my B2C instances, which of course, those go and talk to all the different social providers out there. It could also go and talk to the Microsoft personal accounts. Say I have my Microsoft account, through that I could go and interact with all of those as well. This brought a lot of benefit, not only talking to the other identity solutions we had, but it supported things like incremental consent. I could do least privilege and then add permissions only as I need them. Now, point of interest, the latest version of the Azure AD module has actually added for its authentication, so on the newest, support for the MSAL. If we look at the change log, so let's just jump over quickly, Almost nothing has been adding uh, to this module for a while. But if we look at the very latest update, and they've only just done this because of the deprecation of ADAL and the Azure AD v1 endpoint, they added support for the Microsoft Authentication Library just to keep it ticking along. But if you look beyond that, okay, the last change before that was for Azure AD Preview, February 2022, um, I think in 2021 the actual general availability release hasn't had an update for two years. So there's really nothing happening to this module because it's on this path of, it's going away. They're moving to this new Microsoft graph. And so we also have this idea in addition to this new authentication endpoint, this V2 endpoint for authentication, they also introduced this Microsoft graft. So now we also have Microsoft graph. Now the huge deal here with the Microsoft graph is it's a superior RESTful API. It could do everything this legacy Azure AD API could do and much, much more. And basically it can interact with the entire Microsoft platform. So sure, yes, um, it can talk and do requests against Azure Active Directory, but it can also talk to Microsoft 365, Dynamics 365, um, your OneDrive, the different management solutions that you might have. Um, just all of the different solutions Microsoft Graph can talk to. In fact, if we go and look at the documentation quickly, so what's in Microsoft Graph, it talks about all the different things it can talk to. So obviously huge amounts there, and sure enough, Azure AD is one of those things. But then if you dive in to look at the detail of everything it can do, from this one API now, I can delve into all of the different services, everything I need, and it's just constantly getting updates. It's constantly evolving. If I was to go and look at the change log, for example, of the Microsoft Graph, it's constant there's this constant stream of features being added to this solution to just improve and make it be able to do anything. So this is absolutely the way forward. We saw in the PowerShell, it's not had an update really for two years. This is being updated constantly and I can do everything with this thing. Well, obviously to be able to leverage this, what they also created is, okay, we're used to this Azure AD PowerShell module. Well, they also created a Microsoft dot graph PowerShell module. And as you would expect for the authentication, the authorization, it uses the V2 endpoint. For all of its requests, its interactions, it's using Microsoft Graph. So this is absolutely the way forward. And I'm not gonna go into a huge amount of detail about the Microsoft Graph. Now, if we go and look at, for example, its history for a second, just like the graph itself, this is constantly going over updates. 
we can see, hey, three days ago there was an update, 12 days ago there was an update. Um, before then on the previous versions, it was just constantly being improved. And one of the reasons they can do this is because the Microsoft Graph PowerShell module and the commands are automatically generated from the Microsoft Graph API schema. Makes it much, much easier to update it. The command lit references are automatically updated from that API reference. And there's just a huge amount of value. It works with PowerShell 7. Um, it exposes all of the capabilities of the Microsoft Graph. It's cross-platform, it's using modern authentication, it's least privileged, it's got advanced queries, it's open source, it's got these constant regular updates. Now, it does mean I have to install um, the Microsoft.Graph module, and it exposes all of the different areas of functionality. So if I jump over for a second, now I've already installed the module. If I was to say, hey, get module, list available, and it's, it's kind of like a super module. So what it actually does is install a whole bunch of other modules. But we can see, okay, there, there's a module here about users. There's one about people, there's search, there's teams, there's identity, there's devices, there's groups. So there's all of these different modules available, and you'll see all these different exported commands. If I was to say, well, get command, uh, dash module Microsoft dot graph dot users. It's going to expose to me all of the different things I might want to do. And what you will see is for the most part, the command we used with Azure AD, the Azure AD part has been replaced with MG. So MG and then user whatever instead of Azure AD user, et cetera. So there's a certain element of simplicity to, hey, the command name has just switched things over. However, an important point is though, while the command name has changed, just fairly simply substituting, the arguments and the parameters have not. Because it's built from the schema automatically, the parameters definitely may have changed. So I can't just do a search replace for dash Azure AD and replace it to dash MG in my scripts. That's not gonna work. But we absolutely do need to migrate. I need to take my script and I need to do this migration work. So this is nothing to do with the rename. This is to do for the fact that for a while now, this has been on a deprecation path. This has been on a deprecation path. Those are what this uses. And so this is on a deprecation path. So I have to move over to the go for technology. Now, luckily, there are documents to help us on this. So I'll have all these linked in the description below. But it talks about, it goes through the reasons of why you want to upgrade. And then what's required. So it talks about a series of steps to, hey, understand what my current scripts are doing. Uh, understand the commands. Are there improvements I can make? It talks about using PS Script Analyzer to maybe be able to clean them up. But then in terms of updating them, there's this really nice command lit map. So I can go through and say, hey, I'm using this particular command lit on Azure AD. Well, this is the equivalent command lit for Microsoft Graph. So it's gonna give me that mapping. And also what I can do from here is Remember, there's scopes of permissions. So I can also just type in, well, hey, here's the command I want to use, and it will tell me what is the scope of permissions I need to be able to run that particular command. And then all I do is I feed those in as part of the connect mg graph as the scope. So it's all about least privilege. It doesn't just give you a, everything they have. I'm gonna scope it to only the permissions I really need to do the job. So that's the key point. So there's documentation, there's command maps to assist us doing this migration. So absolutely, yes, there is work to be done, but this is zero to do with the fact that Azure AD is being renamed to Microsoft Entra ID. It's everything to do with, this is a legacy module and it's been on a deprecation path for a long time now. So the rename 
changes nothing, but it doesn't change anything, the fact that yes, you have to move to Microsoft.graph. So maybe the good news is maybe you weren't aware of this, and at least this rename has triggered people to pay attention and from a misunderstanding think, oh, I'm gonna to have to do work for my scripts. Well, no, you don't have to do work from your scripts because of the rename, but hey, it's highlighting the fact that this has been on a deprecation path for a long time. And yes, you need to do work to move to the go forward technology, which is Microsoft Graph with the modern authentication and the modern RESTful endpoint. So I get it. Yes, there's gonna be work to be done. There's a lot of resources out there. Again, start with the Microsoft documentation, the guides they have, and uh, good luck.